People may think that nursing and bartending are two worlds apart, but they're not. They both take care of people, always have a smile, and make you feel better. Our guest was about to follow that path if he hadn't found himself behind the bar. Now he has risen to the top and treating people to his cocktail creations. I'm Susan Schwartz, your drinking companion, and this is Lush Life Podcast. Every week, we're inspired to live life one cocktail at a time by everyone in this industry. Vasilis Karitsis is known well beyond his Athens neighborhood. Not only was he winner of the Greece Diageo World Class Competition, but the Clumsies, the bar he co-owns, is currently ranked sixth best bar in the world and has won a slew of other awards. I met him many years ago at Tales on Tour in Edinburgh, where I waited like an eager teenager to meet him after a session. He's been my friend and go-to ever since for all things drinking related in Greece. Today, I finally get to quiz him on what made him enter this crazy world of hospitality. Before that, I just wanted to remind you that most bars are open now, at least in the UK. So please support them. Some still have delivery, so make sure to find out their status before heading out. Stay safe and always drink responsibly. Now we head to Greece with Vasilis. I'm so excited to have you on the show. So thank, thank you. you so much for being here from Athens. I always love to start the same way. So I'd love to know a little bit about your background, where you grew up, that kind of thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it more detailed now. Because I realized what you're right. So I was born in Athens in general. So I'm a child of uh, the center, let's say, of the capital. Uh, um, and I was studying nurseries uh, since I was 16 years old. I, I, after my high school, I went to the University of Patras, which is a, a city uh around 205 250 kilometers away from the from the center from Athens it's another city of Greece so i went there and i studied nursing but uh, to be honest it wasn't my favorite thing i totally believe that well wait wait hold on how why nursing i don't know to be honest because my mother used to work in a, on a medical company that uh, was selling uh, medicines and this kind of of of, of things and uh, she told me, okay, would you like the job that I do? I said, yes. I was like 17 years old. And uh, you told me, okay, you might have better promotion and, uh, you know, better, uh, let's say, flowing into the company if you study these kind of uh, things. So I said, okay, I'm, I will try. My first choice was uh, to get uh, like a diet doctor, you know, the people that are okay. doing that. But I couldn't make it because I didn't study so hard. So I went to the nursing part in the Patra. It was nice. I mean, it was nice because if you love this job, it's, it's a very difficult job because you have, you have the first touch with the people. And nowadays, I think we need all to congratulate all these people that are fighting against the COVID all around the world. I can feel them because uh, this job, if you don't love this job, you cannot do it. It's, it's really tough because you always see, mm -hmm. you always see the let's say, the, da the, the bad side of, of the people because they are not in the best uh, situation. And they, you can see, you can feel that these people always looking at you and they want a nice word, they want to treat them well. So I totally believe that it's like a kind of, of bartending, you know. If you don't love this job, you cannot do it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hearing you say a lot of things that bartenders say as well. You know, the always have a smile, mm -hmm, always mm -hmm, mm -hmm. treat someone well, you know, and, and then that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I see why, you know, you're not the only um, bartender I've interviewed who exactly. wanted to be a nurse first. Yeah, so, I, mean, I mean, it's it, the only big difference is that on the one side, you see the bad side of the people because uh, they're not, if you're getting into a hospital, of course, you are not in a good situation. And on the other side, uh, you see the good part of people, the funny part of people, the good side of people, you know, which is uh, help you too. That's why I totally believe that bartenders live more, even if they uh -huh. uh, stay out uh, late night. Because you, it's like, it's like receiving the positive energy of the, of the people, which is very important. Of course. 
Mm. So, so what led you into a, a working in a bar? Nice. That's a good question. The- I mean, uh, during my studying in Patra, I, also, I was also working in some uh, bars and clubs. But imagine that this, is, this goes back uh, to 2006, 2007. Uh, we didn't have proper cocktails, let's say, uh, just, uh, just right now, uh, as the situation is now. Uh, we had only uh, long drinks, basic cocktails like mojito and caipirinha and this kind of stuff. And uh, our personality. That was uh, that was that was our uh, let's say uh, way to make people happy. Uh, but uh, I was lucky enough because since I was working big clubs, I used to I remember used to work on a place called Island Club. It was on the seaside of Athens during my summer vacation in Athens. Uh, I used to work on a on a bar in Patra called uh, Garden which was a nice uh, place with uh, very nice people of Patras, of Patra City. And uh, I was lucky because I was in on the switching of being professional bartender because I would say to you that if, you, if someone asks you at 2006, uh, what's your job? And you were telling you, I'm a bartender. The next question was, okay, how long will you do that? I mean, what else do you it, do on yeah, the side? Exactly. Right? It was, it wasn't a, I mean, what else do you do? It wasn't a serious job then, but I I, I, mm-hmm. I was lucky enough because uh, this job was switched in a serious uh, way around two thousand eight, two thousand nine in Greece, and there were uh, some bartenders uh, the, the the previous generation before us uh, with some around, around uh, ten bartenders that used to see this job more professionally. So I was lucky enough because when I was during my job in Island Club, one of these guys uh, used to work there. His name was John Samaras. And this guy uh, used to run the menu on the Island Club. It was the first year, it was the first season of Island that did more proper cocktails. Imagine that we were using passion fruit puree and caramel and fresh lime, not the packed one, not the pressed one or the syrup or the lime cordial syrup. And we were saying, wow, can we mix those things together? You know, it was, it was, it was a nice thing. And, uh, and then I realized that, you know, I love this job because I already love uh, socializing with people. I, I already love uh, uh, make fun with them. But I never thought that this job can be more serious. So I realized that after working with John. And I, he asked me one day, you know, uh, do you believe that you can do this job for your whole life? And I say, yes. I wasn't sure if it, it was the right uh, answer, but, you know, uh-huh. it came very naturally to me. I said, yes, I will well, do I it. Have a qu- yeah. I have, I have a question about the, um, the club. Mm-hmm. Um, what, did you see a difference in the, uh, the people that say that your audience, should I say, your, your punters, um, in what they would drink, did they, you know, when you when you change the menu to start using the fresh stuff, did you find that they were they were happier or oh. they liked it or they could even tell, oh, you know, were was, they ordering were, those things other than the, mo- was, the mojitos, you know, prepackaged stuff? It was a revolution, to be honest, because I you you could see after that a lot of people searching for good bars all around Athens. And they were asking for, you know, the, the cocktail with the passion fruit and the cocktail with the mango, the fresh mango, and the cocktail with the caramel and cacao and, uh, and lime. So people started to ask for more, uh, you know, com- complex cocktails. At the same time, at 2009, Baba Oram opened. You know, Baba Oram, it's, uh, I think you visited, you visited when you were in Athens. Uh, that was the first cocktail bar that, uh, it, of course, Baba Oram is specialized in rums. It has a big selection of uh, different rums all around the world. And this bar uh, started to blend different rums, creating house homemade ingredients like falernum and this kind of stuff. And at the same time, instantly, all the bartenders of Athens wanted to work there, to be honest. <laughs> I was one of those two. I wasn't lucky to work at Baba Oram, but I was lucky to work for a short time in Pereubu which was also the other bar on the seaside part of Athens that uh, was running, was making uh, this kind of cocktails. 
And I, I've learned enough. I've learned a lot of things from bartenders like George Bagos and uh, John Petris, which were already involved a lot uh, on this uh, on this part of cocktails. Um, so, yeah. so at that time, did you say, okay, forget the nursing? Yeah. Mom, sorry, sorry. I'm not going to do that anymore. Did you just say bye-bye? bye-bye. Forget it. Sorry, sorry. I, I found what I want to do, you know. I found it, it, yeah. it was a risky decision, to be honest, because I didn't know if this job is going to be the way that is, it is nowadays, you know. No one knew if this job is going to be as bright as it is nowadays. Since then, it was, uh, was only a job that everyone was uh, accepting as a secondary job. So, but uh, I loved it. And I said, okay, I, I was also lucky enough because at 2010, uh, the, the world-class competition, the global finals, uh, took part in, uh, in Greece. But, so where were you working then? Were you still in the club, in the, um, I'm sorry, in the bar, oh, in I, the town I, in Petra? I first started in, uh, in, in, in Athens. I first started in Island Club, and then I went to a bar that does not exist anymore. In uh, it was called OQ, and then I went to a very history, to a big historical uh, bar of uh, of the center called Eclipse. It was the same Eclipse that you you have in London, the same let's say oh, yeah. style. And then I went to uh, to Pereubu, the bar that I'm telling you now. And then from Pereubu, I, I let's say made the first consulting and I was working there on a small bar of, uh, of Athens called Aperitif. And then- so, so when, where were you when you started to, to compete? I mean, was there competing before world-class in Greece yeah. itself? I mean, we had some local competitions like uh, competitions with uh, Skinos Mastiha. We have the Disarona competition. I did a couple of competitions uh, before world-class. I was also competing in world-class, but, uh, I went to the Greek finals the fourth time that I, 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 com- I was competing, to be honest. And it was very, it was very difficult situation. I was working in, D- in the Gigi Join at 2012, and I did the top 10 at World Class uh, Global uh, Greek Finals. And then I, re- I realized that uh, the rest of the nine bartenders that uh, were competing were, were the top bartenders of town. Yeah, it was Thanos from Babora. Mm-hmm. It was Murphy, the one of the first bar, uh, female bartenders that did great job in uh, in our scene. It was John Samaras, my mentor. It was uh, mm-hmm. George Bagos, the other mentor. Uh, Nikos Bakulis, my partner now and uh, one of the best bartenders in the world. I mean, I was the completely underdog, to be honest. <laughs> no one. Was... But you still made top ten. Yeah, but from the but, 10, from, yeah, fantastic. From the final top ten. I was, I think I was the last person that uh, everyone was thinking that is going to win. And then I did top three because that was the way that the uh, world class was being in uh, this, this year in, uh, in, uh, in Athens. And then the top three guys, we went to the, to the London and all the European top three bartenders were competing against uh, the other uh, Greek bartenders or uh, English bartenders. Or, and then we had we, every, every country was releasing the first winner. And overall, to the challenges that we did, we had one winner. And I was lucky because I won one of these challenges all over Europe. And which one was that? What was the challenge? It was, it was calling uh, flying down to Rio. You had to make two drinks that uh, they were, uh, let's say, expressing because the global final then was in Rio, the Janeiro. And we had to make two drinks that they represent, they express the contrasting things that you can find in Brazil. Of course, in, in Brazil, uh, for me, the most contrasting thing is the rich people and the poor people. So I remember uh, I, what I did is that I went to a fashion uh, artist here and I designed a, a shirt that was half, let's say, dirty and not so good. And on the, on the other half was more formal. So I had a jacket that was one part was was expressing the poor part of the of the of the people and the other was expressing the rich part. And one cocktail was more. Uh, I found what poor people in Brazil uh, used to drink in order to feel more happy. And the, so it was a cocktail like uh, like uh, let's say uh, pina colada with passion fruit because passion fruit you could find everywhere in Brazil. 
It's a fruit that everyone can have. And it was co- it was like a batida. Batida is a very traditional cocktail in uh, in Brazil. And on the on the other part, uh, I I made the cocktail with champagne. It was dedicated to the rich people. So I won this challenge all over Europe because it was a whole concept, you know. Yeah, fabulous. Then I went to the global finals of uh, world class, and uh, I I did like I didn't I didn't go so well. I was the seventeenth to fifty bartenders, and that uh, the final was top sixteen. So I didn't make uh, the oh. final for one. Uh, but for me, you know, I the problem with the, with the competition sometimes is that. It doesn't matter if you don't win the competition. The main thing in competition is that you are connected with people all around the world. You can make very nice friendships. You can make very good contacts with people. And this thing can help you a lot in, in your, in your uh, future, in your career. So what I did, I didn't, I didn't win the competition, but I won a lot of friendships and a lot of nice people from our industry, and I met them, and I met them again all around the world. And uh, I continue my life at the Gin Join, because in 2012, I was working at the Gin Join bar. And then uh, I was lucky enough, because uh, I met, I, I knew Nikos Bakulis, one of my partners. We were very good friends, but he came and joined us to the Gin Join. So we did a very nice duo, let's say a very nice... Uh, cocktail uh, group uh, f- uh, with me and Nikos. We worked perfectly together. Uh, it was like a very nice link. And then my partners that, uh, that I have now from the Clumsies, they were also having uh, a cocktail bar called Theory. It's in Halandri, Halandri suburb, the suburb of Athens. And it was one of the newest, uh, one, of the, one of the most popular and the very first high volume, big bars of Athens. And the one day they came to us and they said, they, they said to me, okay, Vasilis, we want to open a bar in the center of Athens. So would you like to be part of, of, of our bar? I said, yes, of course, I'm going to come with Nikos and we're going to make a very nice team and we're going to run the bar and it's going to be, we'll try to make it also an international bar, not only a bar that is going to be well known in, in Greece. And then we 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 did the clumsies. All right. Before you get to the clumsies, mm-hmm. uh, while while you were at the gin joint, uh, were, were, how did you see you know Greek drinkers change? Uh, you know what did you see over the years that you worked there? Uh, and what did you learn? What 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 I, what I realized at the gin joint is that uh, you know the gin joint was uh, obviously a gin bar. So we had a big range of jeans uh, on the bar back, and uh, I could feel that uh, people were coming in order to taste new spirits, new jeans, because you know the Greek people are gin lovers; they love gin. And in general, they are more white spirits lovers. So what? I didn't know that. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. You know, I think of the Spanish, obviously the English. Yeah, to be honest, um, all the Mediterranean era is more. Uh, they they prefer more uh, white spirits and uh, especially gin. So we had a lot of people that they were standing instead of using the popular uh, gins like Tangere, Gordon's, Bombay, Bifitter. People were coming and asking for different style of gins with different style of tonics and different style of garnishes. And then people were starting and asking for a proper mojito or a proper Manhattan or a proper dry martini. And that was a successful part for our drinkers. Mm-hmm. And then they started to ask for signature cocktails of our, of our uh, bar. That was also another step that helped a lot, you know, uh, our industry to grow up. Uh, do you think the uh, Greeks' love of white spirits is because they are have always drunk white spirits? You know, Mestica and Cipero and no, 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 you know, no. all of these are white spirits. No, because I, I, or do you think it's just a love of gin? I, I think this is because there are two main factors. One is because they love uh, gin, as you said before, and at the same time, it's because uh, you know, in Greece. From uh, April to November, we have hot weathers. We have hot weather. You know, the temperature is much more higher. 
So people prefer more refreshing drinks than boozy drinks. So it's not so easy to drink sometimes, you know, uh, smoked whiskey during July. You prefer something more refreshing. So Greek people always go, always, always, mostly choosing uh, more refreshing and more mixable uh, spirits. And gin is one of, the, of those for sure. Yes, then of course, Gin Joint would be one of the, yeah. the most famous bars in Gin. In, in I, I, still, I uh. still remember uh, me and Nikos making around uh, 400 in a bar. I don't know if you've been to the Gin Joint when you get to Greece. It, it's, it's a tiny bar. It was because it, now it's closed. Uh, Dimitris, the owner, closed the place and he opened another nice bar called uh, Locali, which means local in Greek. Uh, but um, it was a tiny bar. We have only we had only one bar station that we were working behind the bar. Everything was, you know, stacked and uh, very pressed. But what we did every night, we we did around four hundred uh, cocktails per night. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Very nice atmosphere. Uh, very cool cocktails. Uh, it was it was a nice season to be honest. I I stayed there for three three years and a half. And especially the last year that I was working with Nikos was my favorite. Mm -hmm. So you were presented with this opportunity mm -hmm. to open pretty much any kind of bar, I guess, international bar, as you said. Mm -hmm. What Had you been thinking this whole time, oh, my God, if I could have a bar, it would be this. Yeah. You know, and what was this? What was what were you thinking? You know, one of the things that we wanted to to do at the in our bar because we were start talking a lot with Nikos of if we could if we had the opportunity to, to open a bar, how we how this could be. Of course, we had this kind of thinking in, in our mind, and I was lucky enough because around, I think my last uh, my last year my last season of the of the gin join, uh, you know the drink factory. Uh, Yes, yeah. of course. Here in London, I, I, I was, I was, I had the honor to get there and do a stage with these people, and this gave me a lot of knowledge of how you can work the point, the way of thinking, in order to make more complex drinks. So I was really amazed when I when I got there and I saw the Zoe and the rest of the team how they work with uh, with the flavor and the stuff, the tools that they, they use to do that, and I said to Nikos, okay, man. I love that style of, of drinks. When we do our bar, I think we need to focus a lot on that, of how we can make our drinks more complex uh, because uh, there are so many ways to do it. So we had this kind of idea and uh, the guys, uh, my partners, left, the other partners, Lefteris, uh, Yorgopoulos, Thanos Tsunakas and George Kesaris, wanted to open also a big high volume bar in the center of Athens. So Clamps was one of the very first that it was a high volume bar. And uh, at the same time, uh, uh, it wasn't a small bar in the center, let's say. Mm -hmm. So we did a nice combination of uh, having an international a high volume bar and running the cocktails in our prep room upstairs with a lot of modern stuff. And I think that was the key because uh, that, that, that was the key that uh, attracted a lot of uh, professionals in our uh, in our bar because we were working fast our drinks uh, with consistency and at the same time we were trying to create in our bar a nice easy going uh, let's say uh, a nice easy going uh, vibe. Mm -hmm. So imagine that at the Clumsies on a on a on a weekly basis when we are busy, especially on uh, winter. We might serve up to two thousand cocktails per week. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, and, you know, well, then how do you? I know, and you have upstairs, mm -hmm. which is there, are, uh, which we'll talk about in a sec. But you know, how do you keep it from getting sort of out of control? How do you keep the uh, each cocktail being what you want it to be when yeah. it's served at such a high volume? I think uh, the preparation is the key. Always, always, in every part of our life, to be honest, the being prepared is the key. Being prepared for everything. 
two, I think in my opinion, two things you, can, you need to keep in mind when you run a high volume bar. One is to get prepared for that. And at the same time, you cannot say that I can't do nothing. I can't do it. I think the, the point of view of each professional has to be that I don't care. I will do everything I want to do and I will make it happen on the best way. So what we did is that we said, okay, we're going to prepare a lot of stuff upstairs to our preparation room and we will try to make our cocktails in one or two bottles during uh, our shift at the bar. And that work a lot because, okay, you might have you might spend a, a lot of hours on preparing all your cocktails upstairs. But when you have to make the cocktail, you focus more to your customers because your cocktail is very easy and very consistent. So for me, that was the key to not to run, uh, not to panic, you know, with the, so many people into mm -hmm. our place. And tell me about upstairs. Upstairs. Okay. So upstairs, there are two main floors. There are two main things. One is our prep room, as I told you before, is the place that we have our modern stuff to work with, uh, with uh, cocktails and, uh, of course, upgrade our skills and be more uh, creative. And next to it, we have a place called The Room, which is uh, like a living room inside with a pool and a table and a bookmark full of vintage spirits that everyone can book, uh, everyone. But it's only for 10 to 15 people. So you're getting your friends, you're coming upstairs, you stay there all night, and you have a personal bartender from our team making drinks for you. We don't have menu. We only do uh, more classic cocktails, let's say, and we try to make cocktails without menu. So we are talking with the people and we say, what do you want? What's your, what's your mood? What do you prefer? And we are trying to customize as much as we can, you know, uh, the the type the style of cocktail that our uh, people want to taste so when people say oh well i like a mojito but i don't want that i, I mean or should i say do people usually leave it up to you yes. or are they pretty honest or do they say no i really really want this one thing yeah we can do both if someone says to us you know i want this one specifically we do it if someone says okay i trust you do whatever you like we're just making some quick questions like what's your style, what's your mood now, what do you prefer to drink? And we are trying to customize as much as we can his flavor or, it's, or her flavor. And so downstairs, I know you say you don't have a menu upstairs, mm -hmm. but downstairs for, say, you're, you're just about to open your first bar that you are part of, where did you start with the menu there? Like, how, how many drinks did you have and we, or choices? We always have around uh, 17 to 18 drinks in our menu. We change our menu every year. And every year we have a different conceptual menu, let's say. Uh, imagine that the last, the last menu that we have at the Clumsies, we call it Revisited. And it's, uh, the concept is that we took all the recipes that uh, were our best sellers from the past menus Imagine that our bar team is changing a couple of times and we gave these cocktails to our bartenders and we said to them, okay, just keep the identity as it is and add your own style to the drink. So that's why we call it Revisited. Uh, we did this kind of concepts in our menus. Every, every year we change the menu. That's the, that's the thing that we do. So you opened... And then all of a sudden you're getting all of these awards. So yeah. talk to me about some of the, you know, finding out that you were up for spirited awards and world's best yeah. and all of that stuff. I mean, that was something that uh, we had in our mind since we opened, but we weren't sure if it's going to be in that way. We always thinking about, you know, getting into the 50 best bars list, uh, getting into the cocktail tales of the cocktail lists and uh, winning some Greek, local awards, but we never thought that the Clumsies is going to be like that. But at the same time, what we said since we opened is that we are going to first invite some of the key people, let's say, of our industry in order to show them how important uh, it is to come to Athens first and then to the Clumsies and check our bars. So first, the first uh, guest we had was Eric Lawrence. 
You know, Eric Lawrence. A good guest to have, yeah. A legendary person. He's been my guest too. Yeah, yeah he's one of the legends of our uh, of our uh, uh-huh. of our industry. And at the same time, what we wanted to show him is not only the clumsies, but the whole Athenian scene. Because for me, it's very important to get into a place and not to stuck only into into a bar. You need to show to the people how your community works. So since Eric came, we drove we drove them to other nice bars of, of Athens, nice restaurants, nice coffee shops, sightseeing of Athens, and he got amazed. So he went back to his uh, to London and he started, let's say, talking about the clumsies and how good was uh, Athens and clumsies too. And then we invite Ryan, Chetty. Mm-hmm. And we, he had the same experience, and he loved uh, our bar in, uh, in Athens. And then we had the cocktail lovers. We did the same, and then we start making this, uh, inviting different people in our in our place and in our city. At the same time, uh, the Greek bar show was becoming bigger and bigger, and that helped us a lot because the last five six years, Greek bar show for me is one of the uh, most important events all over the world. And uh, also, Greek Bar Show is, was in, is, is inviting a lot of uh, industry people. And this, these industry people coming to our place, and they see what we do. And this is very important for us at the same time. So I think that mm-hmm. all the industry people that came to, to the bar, they show that we do something different. And at the same time, it's, it's, not a, it's a bar that is not located in, a, in London or New York or in a big city, you know. So Athens is a smaller city, but people appreciate that you can find everything around, as you know. You can have yes, it's it's a yeah, it's a city that it's it's hard not to fall in love with it once you know it and the people. Yeah, and at the same time, Definitely. you know, um, that helped a lot. Not only the clumsies, but the whole industry and the whole Athenian scene of of of, of uh, bars. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, some of these people transfer their opinion, let's say, express their opinion to other industry people and other, other industry people ga- came by themselves to our place. And at the same time, one of the things that we did and it, it, make, it made sense, sense not only in Greece but in the whole world is that we, instead of making uh, guest, bartenders with one, guest bartenders with one bartender or two, we decided to make uh, pop-ups. So the first pop-up that we did at uh, 2016 or 15, I'm not sure, was called uh, American Bar, the American, the hotel, uh, sorry, the hotel bars, uh, the clumsy hotel bar. That was the, that was the, that was the, let's say the, the concept. So we invite some of the best uh, hotel bars all around the world, and what, what we did is that we reconstruct the building next to the clumsies as a big hotel. Oh, no way. Yeah. What? Oh, my God. It sounds amazing. And was it, how, how long did it run for? Six hours. So just one, one night? One night, six hours. hours. And that was the key because imagine instead of, instead of making, uh, uh, let's say, social media for uh, one, two, three days, which is not so good because after three days you're missing, people don't, don't get focus of what you do. In six hours, all over the world knew about this pop-up and the people that uh, were attending. And so, where did you, so where were what hotels were they from? Uh, it was uh, Savoy. It was uh, Lobster. It was uh, Dandelion. It was uh, Manhattan. It was uh, uh, Broken Shaker. It was Nomad. Oh my goodness! Some of the best uh, hotel bars in the world. And then the next year we did the American Dream Bar. We invited the same, like uh, American bars, uh, some bars from um, important bars from America, from the United States, and we found another building and we reconstructed as a, a American neighborhood. And after that, we did the pop up with the Latin American people. So we invite we invite Latin American bar, uh, bars on a rooftop that we found, we're reconstructing as a Latin American uh, style with live music and, uh, and customized cigars and uh, Latin food. And we did the same. And the last one was, uh, was uh, the Tiki Bar. 
We found a beat. We reconstructed the same as a tiki style uh, beats. And we did a beach party with some of the most important uh, tiki bars all around the world. So imagine that all these things uh, giving popularity, let's say, in uh, people that come in realizing how hard we work in order to be, you know, on the on a good way in an international level. And at the same time, what, so- what industry people are appreciating, in my opinion, is that they are coming to a bar that sometimes uh, on, a, on a normal way, because now we are not normal in this season, uh, but when we are normal, uh, we serve up to 300 people at the same time, fast with consistency. So I totally believe that uh, industry people appreciate that a lot. I know I've been there on a Saturday yeah, exactly, night. I've seen exactly. how fast. I'm <laughs> exactly. That's the point. Uh, um, so I guess, I guess now you realize that this is a, um, this is a career you can have. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, um, so, well, what I wanted to get back to was wh- when did you find out? I mean, or how did you react? Obviously, you must have been excited. But when you found out, especially last year, that you were sixth on the list of world's best, I mean, the world is a big place. Yeah. You know? Uh, to be honest, to be honest, they, this is the second time we are in a six. Uh, at, at the 50 best, we started as a two uh, when we opened. After six months, we were at the 22 position. And then from 22... So you already started at the top. Yeah. <laughs> so then we went to nine position. Then we went to the six position. Then seven. And then back to six. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. And uh, I, I, to be honest, me and the team, we weren't sure that uh, we're going to be in this position this year because new bars were coming uh, 50 burst bar, uh, bar, not 50, I mean, the whole industry pushes more Asian bars. So we said, okay, we're, we're heading into the list, but we're not sure that we're going to be on the same way. But we, we are fine. I mean, the last five years, we are on the, on the top 10, uh, the top 50, which is very important for, for us. So it's not a problem. And the list, we're starting to counting. And then we're, we realized that we're six again. And we were so mm-hmm. excited about it because, you know, we, then we realize that uh, we are not, because the first year you say, okay, it might be only by luck. Second year, you say the same. After the third year that you are in the top 10 in three times in a row, you say, okay, industry realizing how hard we work. And this is very right, important. We're doing for something us. right. Yeah, yeah, that's very important for us. Now, you know, it's funny, since I've lived in England mm-hmm. and I, I, I am, I'm with someone who loves Greece and is from Cyprus, mm-hmm. so I know a lot about the, the Greek spirits mm-hmm. because we drink a lot of them. Um, I've seen the popularity of things like Mastika, mm-hmm. Tsipro, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Iraqi. Uh, they are just growing and growing and growing. Has, has this surprised you or, you know, how have you... You have you started? Did you always use those in your cocktails, or are you just starting now that they're becoming popular? I think I think it's a it's a combination, to be honest, because most of the people, most of the Greek people, used to drink this kind of spirits only with food and neat, not with not mix not mix them in in cocktails. Mm. But since Greek bartenders start to uh, become more and more creative they start to use more and more the Greek spirits. And then the companies that are running Greek spirits realize that they need to invest and make better spirits too. So this was, this was a good combination, not only for the spirits, but for the bartenders uh, to get motivated and use more and more Greek spirits to their, uh, to their uh, cocktails. I'm going to give you two examples. One for us is the Otto Athens Vermouth that we do with uh, me. It's a recipe from myself and Nikos uh, in collaboration with a Greek company that also releasing the Skinos Masticha. Uh, so we did one of the first uh, Greek Vermouths in the modern history of, of, uh, of uh, Athenian Greeks, uh, Greek, Greek and Athenian scene. It's a Mediterranean Vermouth that focuses more to the Greek spices and herbs. Because you know, in- I have a question on that, which I was going to bring up anyway. Okay. Was why why a vermouth? Because I I saw that you had started because, a vermouth. because the low ABV uh, category is becoming more and more popular all over the world, 
And we said, okay, we have nowadays a good quality of wine in Greece. We can find easily fresh fruits and we can find easily herbs and spices all over Greece. Why don't we try to make a very a proper, nice Greek vermouth? So if you taste autos, you will see that it doesn't look like an Italian vermouth or a French vermouth. It's completely different. And that was because we didn't want to make another Greek vermouth that looks like an Italian vermouth. We wanted to make a Greek vermouth that is going to create an identity in our, in our uh, category. And at the same time, the other example is the Opurist. It's, it's, it's a Tsipuro, a new age Tsipuro that, that was created by, by 10 talented Greek bartenders. They did a nice collaboration and they released uh, this Tsipuro. It is released, uh, I think, from the beginning of this year. And it's amazing. Next time you're coming to Greece, you have to taste it. It's, it's, it's so good. So I want to say in general that this, this, this came because we had a good combination and a great collaboration between bartenders and uh, Greek companies that were producing spirits. It was like a combination. And, and both of those, the, well, the vermouth, obviously, what goes into to drinks. The Tsipro, do you see that as something that you drink by itself or that you, uh, like they used to do with food or to combine in, for cocktails? In, in the old times, they used to drink it only with food. Nowadays, mm. they, no, but- nowadays they combine it a lot to, the, to cocktails and they drink it. The, I mean, the... the- yeah, the one that you specifically created uh, with the, or the 10 bartenders, is that for to go to be combined yes, with cocktails yes, or yes, to drink yes, by yes. itself? Combined with cocktails mm-hmm. uh, mostly and uh, combined with long drinks, with tonic, with soda, with this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's amazing. The packaging, the flavor is so good. Mm. So I guess we're left to say what's what's next for you. Uh, are you are you planning to do another hotel? I mean, we're talking about in normal times. We're going to pretend that it's normal times. The next, the the, the very next thing for me is uh, now we are running with Nikos, my partner, one of my partners, Nikos, my friend and my partner, my brother. To be honest, we are involved on a beach bar restaurant in Crete Island. Ooh. Yeah, so we are we have a collaboration with uh, another bartender that uh, he used to work at the Clumsies for us. And he went back to Crete, and we're going to collaborate in a nice project in uh, in, in Falasarna Beach. It's going to be a beach bar restaurant with a canteen, and we're going to serve more refreshing drinks. And uh, we're going to serve in, in a collaboration with a Cretan chef, uh, Cretan food. So this one is going to start on Saturday. And because uh, you you guys are allowed out, yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've done so well. And uh, I think that's the next thing that we're going to do. And then we need to see because we need to see what's going to happen with the virus and all the stuff in, in October. And I think uh, after October we're going to have uh, more plans to do, more things to do. All right. Well, we will definitely visit you then. Yes, please. That's yes, a guarantee. Please, yes, please. All right. So I can actually see you in person. Of course, of course, of course. Whenever you want, you're more than welcome. And it has been such a joy to, I feel like I'm in Greece. You're going to, you know, July, we're in Greece usually, and you've brought me right there please, right now. Please come back. So, please come back. On July, is going to be open. So if you find time and you are okay with uh, all the quarantines and this kind of stuff, you are more than welcome. Thank you. And um, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It was so great to finally learn about the Clumsies and its origins. I can't wait to get back to Athens. I then asked Vasilis for his top tips for the home bartender and where he would like to be right now if he could choose any place in the world. So can you tell me your top tips for the home bartender? Yeah, I think for me, the the top tips is that you can use any tools that you can have in your house. I mean, uh, it's nice to use a spoon or it's good to use your knives instead if you want to steer a cocktail. You know, it's it's you don't you don't have to search for uh, special tools that say in your house. At the same time, uh, you can do more built cocktails and keep the flavor and the consistency on them. 
it's very important because it's more easy to make built cocktails instead of making second cocktails in your house. And at the same time, bring your friends the right number of uh, quarantine and try to keep your positive vibes because that's very important even if you are in, in your house or in your bar. Got a little, a little Grecian hospitality. Exactly. Greek hospitality. It's very important everywhere. Now, if you could be anywhere drinking anything right now, where would that be? I would love to be in Puerto Rico with my bros from La Factoria and enjoying together the Puerto Rican uh, cocktails and the view and the sun and the vibe there. I would love that. Send my love to the guys. I'm sending my love. He may be dreaming of Puerto Rico, but his cocktail of the week brings us closer to his home. Cocktails in a can have been super trendy right now, and you can only buy our cocktail of the week in a can if you live in Athens. So we are really lucky that Vasilis is sharing the recipe with us. Our cocktail of the week combines a little Athens and a little London, which is how I feel, at least when I'm in Greece. It's called the Athenian Spritz. You can build this cocktail in a wine glass filled with ice. Measure out 50 mils of Otto's Athens Vermouth and add it to the glass. Then add 15 mils of rhubarb liqueur infused with coffee beans. Then top it all up with London Essence grapefruit and rosemary tonic. Then garnish with basil leaves. You can find out how to make Vasilis's coffee bean infused rhubarb liqueur at alushlifemanual.com where you'll find this recipe, more vermouth recipes, plus all the cocktails of the week, as well as links to all the ingredients. I think the Greek salad is one of those perfect foods if done right. Glorious Greek tomatoes, cucumbers that just taste different and never make you sick, the briny olives and that cheese, the feta, which is the perfect sidekick. I eat it every day, twice a day when I'm in Greece. No matter how many times I make it here in London, they never taste the same. If you live for Lush Life, make sure you're giving back to the bars you love by donating or taking part in cocktail delivery where you live, or visit one now that they're open. The music for Lush Life is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. And Lush Life is always and will be forever produced by Evo, Terra, and Simpler Media Productions. Which leads me to say the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation. And always drink responsibly and wash your hands and stay safe. Next time, we have a brand ambassador who was really born to represent the brand he does. He's been using it since he was a child. And yes, it is allowed. You'll see. Until that time, bottoms up.